All right, well, welcome to the Deep Dive. I am David with KCM. For those of you that are joining, maybe for the first time, uh, excited about this morning, uh, the topic that we're going to talk about. You know, for the last couple of weeks, we've talked about, uh, you know, some changes in inventory. This big question, is the market slowing down? We're going to kind of keep on that same topic this morning. And I'm going to give you a little bit different perspective on listings. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, too, maybe the last time we talk about it, about the forbearance topic. Um, and so I'm excited to have you on. And I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and share this slide. It's a quote from Odell. Data Cushy from First American. We follow First American a lot and uh, rely on their information for trusted uh, data. But she says this, it's not the white hot market from earlier in the year. It's not the 2020 market benefiting from a wave of pinup demand. But make no mistake, this is still a hot housing market. You know, it's what we've been saying for, for many weeks here. Context is important. If you remember that from uh, the deep dive a couple of weeks ago, she goes on to say purchase apps slow modestly week over week, but remain above 2019 levels, which, oh, by the way, were the strongest in a decade. 2019 was the best year in 10 years in the housing market. And where we stand today is above that, a very, very good market. You know, I mentioned we we're going to look at listings today, and I want to kind of break that down from active listings. So share this graph here from Realtor.com. This shows active listings going all the way back to January. And what do you see? You see kind of this dip there and, and starting to rise again here as recently uh, the data here as August. So nothing really about that to stand out. That's typically what happens in the seasonality in our business. But I want to start to compare this to prior years like we did uh, a couple of weeks ago. So let's look at active monthly listing counts, 2017, 2018, 2019. I'm gonna add in 2020 and 2021 in just a minute. So right here you see the typical flow of active listing counts. Start out you know, a little bit low in January and February, start to rise and then sometime in the fall, you know, we'll call it here in this uh, visual, sometime around September, listings then start to, to, to tail off into December. And then we started back over again and uh, folks begin to start to think about bringing their homes to market. People begin to think about buying homes. And, uh, and that's the typical real estate market year in and year out. Let's look at what happened in 2020. Again, anything but a typical real estate market. We know that. Well, what happened in 2020? Well, we're starting off, we were low in active listings in January and February, but that was before the pandemic hit. The pandemic hits, we see lower rates come into the picture and active listings start to drop. Why is that? We've talked about it many, many times. The meaning of home change. We've got low rates and people said, I need this in a home for me and my family. Maybe I need a backyard, I need a place for the kids to study, I need a place to work out, whatever the case may be. And active listings started to deteriorate. We started to lose those because everybody was buying everything up and all the reasons we know for that. I, I wanna pause here for a second. This is a great way to show somebody that you're working with why we're in the situation we're in in real estate across the country. We've talked about the lack of uh, new builds that have come in for the last 13 years. If you're a, a KCM member, you're well prepared for that conversation and the visuals that go along with it. Um, but this active listing count really shows the picture of what happened in real estate in 2020. Now let's add in 2021, the green bar that's happening there. What do you see there? We're even further down in active listing counts. These, these homes are being snapped up. But what do you see? You start to see this lift coming and we're getting closer to where we were in 2020. Again, starved of listings there last year. But what we want to see is we want to see that green bar start to cross over where we were in 2020. Why is this important? It's important for a number of different reasons. But if you go back to what we've talked about, we don't have a buyer issue in real estate across the country. There's not an agent listening today or somebody in our business that says, I don't have enough buyers. Plenty of buyers out there in the market. What we need are the listings. Now, we, we, we know through 2020, we depleted listings, active listings fell, people didn't put homes on the market, and we know the reasons for that, they had health concerns, financial concerns, all the things that we know, and what do we know now? We see those listings starting to come back in the market. We need more of them. 
here's the bottom line on that. If we see listings continue to grow, we'll start to see price appreciation moderate. If we don't see listings grow, we're going to continue to see this robust appreciation across the country. Many areas, you know, appreciation is getting to a point where, where folks are going, gosh, this is something like we've never seen before. Very, very strong appreciation across the country uh, in residential real estate. But, you, you know, this listing number will be key to understanding that as we go through the fall. Again, more listings, more supply coming on the market, um, and, and we'll start to see appreciation moderate. That listing number stays low, and we're going to see appreciation still remain strong. Now, one thing I told you on the front end, we're going to talk about forbearance. Maybe the last time we talk about it, uh, I want to give you a snapshot on that because this is one area that I can tell you right now where we're not going to see listings from, and that's from foreclosures. Why is that? Because homes have appreciated at such a rate that folks now can sell uh, their homes. They don't ha it doesn't have to go into foreclosure. You have something that wasn't an option back in 2008. So let's take a look real quick. If you're familiar with KCM, you've, you've seen this graphic many, many times. This is what's happening to folks as they come out of forbearance. As of August 29th, just a couple of weeks ago, the green area there, 43%, I'm going to call it 42.9% were paid in full. They didn't need it. Now, those are, I'm not saying they took it uh, incorrectly, but they maybe took it saying, I don't know what tomorrow holds, and we're going to go ahead and take forbearance. When it came due, they paid it off and, and, and they didn't need it. The green portion, I mean, the, the blue portion there, 39.8%, almost 40% worked it out with their bank. They went through a rate and term refinance, a modification, a deferral, tacked it on the back end, whatever the case may be, and they worked it out. Over time, the green area has gotten slightly smaller and the blue area has gotten larger, okay? And, and the red area, which is those who are still in trouble, has remained relatively the same, ticked up about a percent, but, but really remained in that 16, 17% area. Now, if we start to look at these numbers, and, and that's not something you're hearing about in the media, but... This is, this is the reality of what forbearance, uh, the outcome is. And you're starting to see many folks talk about that even outside of our business saying, there's not going to be this foreclosure crisis like 2008. And that's good that that information is coming out. But Black Knight just came out with the most recent uh, data on the share of mortgages that are in active forbearance with less than 10% equity. On the current loan to value, there's only 2% of mortgages that don't have less than 10% equity. And you see 4%, 7%, that is, if you just deferred the interest or you deferred the, the principal and interest. Uh, here's what's key there. We've seen such appreciation right now. When you have 10% equity in a home, you can put some money in your pocket, you know, sell the home, put some money in your pocket, and hopefully get to the other side of the crisis that you and your family are uh, you know, uh, in at that moment. So certainly don't see foreclosures uh, adding to the inventory that's coming in. I'm not saying people aren't going to have to sell because they are, but we won't see this foreclosure crisis uh, coming out of forbearance. But they go on to say in that Black Knight study that uh, all in just 130,000 uh, of the active forbearance plan have less than 10% equity after factoring in 18 months of deferrals. Now, 130,000, that's a big number uh, of, of folks there that have less than 10% equity. Now, we're, we're not saying that all those 130,000 are going to need to sell or, you know, some of them are going to go into foreclosure. Things will happen with those folks. But I want to put that number into perspective because this is where it gets really uh, interesting. If you take that number of 130,000 active forbearance plans that have less than 10% equity, if you assume that every one of them went into foreclosure, again, that's not what I'm saying, but this gives you a picture of what we would need just to make up for the last two years. We'd need over 430,000 foreclosures just to make up the last two years. So we certainly know listings are not going to come from that area right now based on what we're seeing with foreclosures, I mean, based on what we're seeing with forbearance and knowing we haven't gotten those. You know, if anything, we will see less foreclosures this year. We've seen in a long, long time uh, due to, to, to all the things um, that, you know, have been put in place to help homeowners and the ability homeowners now have to sell their homes. 
So we know, you know, those, those listings aren't going to come from there. What our job right now is to get this message out in the market. Maybe somebody does need to talk about uh, selling their home that's been impacted financially from the coronavirus, and we can help them. They can now sell their home. They don't have to let it go back to the bank. But that just gives you a little bit of perspective about those that are in forbearance and those that um, that ultimately may have to do something. In the tremendous gap, a lot of that gap, you know, has led to uh, just inventory that we don't have. Uh, out in real estate today. You know, Bill McBride, I'll close with this. Bill McBride says the bottom line is that most homeowners in forbearance have sufficient equity in their homes and there will not be a huge wave of foreclosures like uh, following the housing bubble. I think that's uh, that, that's something that we can say confidently. You should be able to take that confidently into the market. If you're a KCM member, we, you've been following this a long, long time. Uh, and are well-educated to have those conversations with the buyers in the market. So hopefully this information gives you something to talk to those that are out looking right now, those that are thinking about selling, those that are thinking about buying, to accurately explain what's happening in residential real estate. So we're grateful as always to everybody that joins the deep dive. Uh, we'll be back again next week and we'll see you on there. And uh, we always appreciate you joining. Take care. <music>